Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. My name is Anton, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at my homebrew Wii setup, and I'm going to show you all my games, emulators, and other things that I have going on in the system. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button for future videos. So without further ado, let's take a look at my homebrew Wii. <laughs> So, we are basically going to take a look at all the channels I have. I'm not going to go into depth on some of them just because they don't work. And also, I'm not going to go into the WiiWare games because I'm doing a separate episode on those. So, why don't we just take a look at all of them. And, uh, yeah, so why don't we start up here with, in the disc channel where you can basically play your games. The me channel. The photo channel. The Wii Shop channel, which will take a moment the forecast channel, the news channel, the internet channel, the We Speak channel, the Nintendo channel, the Check Me Out channel, YouTube, Netflix. So sadly, not all of these channels work anymore, which is just because of the ReConnect24. Um, but luckily, uh, there are ways to play it, but we're not going to focus on those today. Let's take a look at the next page, which is what we're going to take a look at. And uh, yeah, these are basically all of the homebrew applications and some WiiWare titles. So let's start off with WarioWare DIY, which is essentially a way to showcase your WarioWare DIY levels on your Wii. And you just use the cursor of the Wiimote just to act as the stylus. So you can play your games and uh, it's kind of cool actually and it works It works very well. Next we have is the Legend of Zelda Save Data Update channel. We have Dr. Mario Online RX, which essentially is a Dr. Mario game that's actually very good for the Wii. I really, there's a couple cool modes in it, so yeah, it's pretty cool. We also have Pokemon Rumble, which, if you've played Pokemon Quest, it's kind of like that. Um, they did release a couple of games in the series for the Nintendo 3DS, so yeah, it's definitely an interesting game. Next we have is Mega Man 9 and 10, and they are essentially Mega Man games that look more like the NES games. So they're not actually NES ROMs, they just are meant to look like they're part of the NES series of games. Next, let's take a look at some emulators. FCE Ultra GX is a port of the PC version for the Wii, and it has a fantastic user interface that I absolutely love. It's easier to go through your games and everything, and they make it super, super simple. I absolutely love all the different settings and configurations that this emulator has. The games on this emulator run perfectly fine, and they're honestly great. You can also change the video settings and more nitty gritty um, details in the settings, and they easily set it up for you to navigate where those files are. But overall, you can play with different types of setups. For example, if you want to play as the Wiimote uh, on its sideways, you can do that, or if you want to play with a classic controller or the nunchuck. So it's very customizable in how you want to play the game. You can also play with a GameCube controller if you choose to as well. Amazingly enough, it also supports the NES Zapper, and it works perfectly on games like Duck Hunt, where it pretty much is perfectly aligned with it, so you can essentially play it on how you'd actually play on NES. I'd say this is the best way to play Duck Hunt on a modern TV. The same developer by FCE NES also created the same user interfaces for SNES 9GX, which is a port as well of a PC emulator, and it basically looks and works the same as you'd expect from the other one. Just the different colors and uh, more extra modes for the SNES. But overall, this works perfectly fine too. I've run into no problems, and you can of course play with any controller you want. If you want to control with um, even the SNES um, Classic controller, also really works well as well for this um, game. 
but you can play with any configuration uh, you want, so it's fantastic just because of that alone. And same with the NES Zapper, you can also use the Super Scope, and that works pretty much exactly the same way. Just you have a couple more buttons on the Wii Mote that you actually can use now, such as the back button and the one and two button, and you can also use the mouse. Although it doesn't actually work that well, I don't find it to be as simple. Um, it still does kind of work. I wouldn't really recommend playing this because it didn't really track it well and it got stuck, the cursor. So I don't think this game works well. Next we have BBA GX, which again is another port, and it follows the same style as the last two, with the same kind of settings and ideas and a graphical user interface. But what's fantastic about this emulator, you can play Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games all on your TV, and they look fantastic. Like the Game Boy Player, it kind of emulates it the same way. Um, you can use the GameCube controller, so if you want to feel like you're playing on the Game uh, Boy Player, you can do that. It all, you can also use your Wiimote. And because of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and how they use very no buttons, it's easy to put on a Wiimote and it feels perfectly fine. So definitely these are fantastic and and if you finally want to play Mother 3 on your TV, this is probably the best way to do it. Next, let's take a look at the Nintendo 64 emulator, which is called Wii 64. This emulator is your basic Nintendo 64 emulator, and there's not maybe a lot of settings as there could be, uh, but it's still really good either way, and you can play with a classic controller or any other uh, Wii controller configuration, but what's really fantastic is that they let you play with the Wiimote only, and uh, you're gonna see in, in the gameplay, as we can see, you can pick a game and you can have a list of a whole bunch of them as you want. As you can see, this is a hack of Super Mario 64. US Plus Play game, as you can see, it loads up perfectly fine. And yeah, but what's interesting about playing with just the Wiimote, you may think there's not enough buttons. What it does is it makes the analog stick the Wiimote itself. So you, when you tilt it, it actually works. It, it honestly is kind of strange, and I didn't expect it to work as well as it does. But if you want to challenge, there you go, it works fine. But so the only problem is, when you're going to want accuracy when you're climbing up a bridge, um, you won't really find that here. Uh, but all the buttons work, so it's perfectly playable Super Mario 64, which is why I recommend playing with like a nunchuck, for example, if you want to play it like that, or with a GameCube controller. Um, but this is another way to play game uh, to play Nintendo 64 games better than they originally were, because the N64 controller is not good at all. Um, but yeah, like overall, you can play the games perfectly fine, and they work fantastic as ever. Also, the graphics look fine too. Um, for the Nintendo 64, it kind of upreses them to the Wii's resolution, which honestly is fantastic. Next, let's take a look at USB Loader GX, which is a USB loader that essentially you can put in your um, games, and it has this beautiful um, graphical user interface that you can essentially go around with your games and it's super super simple you just put them on uh, there's a couple specific things I may do a video of how you guys can set this up if you want to learn more about this um, but uh, essentially you can have all of your games on here and it's super simple um, to navigate through and they all work perfectly fine um, as long as you set them up as well you can also put your games in using like, your actual own disc so uh, most of these games are used uh, for my actual disc, so you just put them in and it essentially uh, eliminates the use of actual discs, so if you just want to have all your games digitally, this is the way to do it. You can also have GameCube as well, and Wii, so they both work perfectly fine. Um, I know there's other ways to set up WiiWare, I haven't set that up yet, um, but as you can see, this is it perfectly works great, and what's great about this is that you can put your one memory card and play your GameCube games um, on here as well. So, say uh, you don't want to use the disc, so you can just put the, the memory card as well. Um, and I believe it's best if you have a Wii that actually supports GameCube games, because I've heard that they might not work on a Wii that doesn't support GameCube games. Um, but at least it is pretty cool, and you could play all of these fantastic games on your system. What also is fantastic is that all of the box arts are available to get online, so you just click on the game you want to find the box art, and it will find it on Game TDB, and there I have even my box art, my custom one that I've created, and it loads that up right away, so it's fantastic, and you don't need to find any images online, and it's not complicated at all. All you do to load up the game is just click on it, and as you can see, it just comes up with right here, and it looks pretty cool. 
And in theory, it should just load up as it has a distance side, which is fantastic if you want to play your game. Also, what's fantastic is that you can play your GameCube games with any controller configuration you want, whether you want the Wii Classic controller or the Wii Pro controller, or just the Wii mode itself. It's totally up to you, and uh, you can play it wireless. Now, you don't need to use a GameCube controller. The graphics also look nicer on the Wii than the GameCube, personally. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you may just want the GameCube controller because that's what the game uses, but you can play as, as with any configuration you want. Playing Wii games is essentially just the same. You just click the box art, it loads up the game, and it runs perfectly fine. I've not really run into issues. You only run into issues if it's not set up correctly, um, in terms of like the folders and everything where it can actually find the game. So you kind of have to make sure the paths are all correct. Uh, once you do that, the games load perfectly fine and work. Um, and this is all running, there's no disc in the Wii when I'm playing this game. so. It's fantastic as you can just leave all of your games in your collection without taking them out and uh, it's just perfectly am amazing I have to say this is probably the greatest thing about what modding a Wii is that you can play these games just whenever you want and just swap them out on the fly without taking a disc out or anything and uh, yeah I think this is the best thing about modding a Wii. Now this is pretty much where the bulk of the modding happens when you want to get into homebrew applications and more, which is the homebrew channel. And the homebrew channel is the heart of your entire Wii, and this is where you can have applications like the multi-mod manager, which changes specific settings of the Wii that you can't normally access. That has to do with when you're modding the Wii and you want to get like the USB loader jacks, it's a little bit more complicated in terms of when you want to get um, specific things. Um, and the only way to do it is to change like specific um, OS settings, right? And that's kind of a more difficult thing to do, um, honestly. It took me a while to get all of this set up. As you can see, these are basically each of the, the stuff that you're seeing. So, for example, Wii 64 is running off of here. What you're seeing on the, um, the home menu is essentially a forwarder to take it to one of these applications. That's all it is. It's not running from that. It's just a little kind of just shortcut, essentially, right? And, uh, yeah, so you have like a whole bunch of cool things that I'm not going to be taking a look at a lot of these, I'm only going to be taking a look at the ones I think are worth mentioning. Some of these will actually be saved for future videos, um, so if you do want to see that, of course, uh, make sure to tell me in the comments down below. But, how do you get all the applications? Well, the Humber browser is where you can get all these free applications. Essentially, you can get games, emulators, demos, media and even utilities these are all created by people and it updates with the internet so you don't have to like say put in a new file in your wii each time it just automatically updates where you can get just each uh, new upcoming things everything downloads on your sd card and this is pretty much the way you'd get the vba gx um sned 9gx nfce um nes emulators and you can get them all through here and get the channel um as well so this is pretty much the way you want to get a lot of these cool applications, and yeah, I would definitely recommend getting the Homebrew Browser. And also, another application, which is Revolution, is essentially taking the disc of, say, Super Mario Bros. Wii, uh, and if you want to play a new Super Mario Bros. Wii, you just put the ROM inside, and essentially it will automatically patch it with your disc. So if you do want to play those games, without having to, say, get a ROM of it or, um, you know, patching it and then getting a patched uh, ISO or WBFFs. This is the perfect way to do it, and it's super simple. Well, anyway, guys, that's it for the video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment down below anything you thought um, you would like to see in the future because I know a couple people might be asking about how to do this and how to do that and how to do this. So if you guys have enough suggestions and you guys maybe uh, I see a lot of people suggesting the same thing then I will do a video on that and maybe turn it into a series. And I also have a couple ideas in terms of to do homebrew application just a single video on one of those so yeah, if you guys didn't see anything, that if I didn't try to cover on one thing, maybe um, you might see in the next future videos. And I plan to do a video just dedicated to WiiWare games, um, just because of the Wii Shop channel. But anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.